Alright, now I have a title in the broadcast. Hopefully this will work. Esther, how you doing, dear? This one's gonna be fun. I have a great video to get us kicked off here. You need help? Oh no! Well, after I'm done the broadcast, I'll open up the private room, my dear Dawn. Your computer. Uh-oh. Tony, how you doing? No worries, Esther. No worries. All right. So, does the internet forget? What we do on the internet, is it not indeed permanent? We create no sound. How can you have no sound? No sound? I'm hearing sound on my side. Anybody else? Tony, can you give, give me a number one if you can hear? Two of no here. Ah, Dr. John, I think you're alone and no sound. Okay. So the internet, our activities, leave. Thank you so much. Oh, I, the echo will go around because I was testing audio here. Creates a digital tattoo. That digital tattoo can be something that can be hidden by clothing or it can be something that is going to be right out on your face. So I'm going to give you some examples of people who have made some pretty poor decisions relative to their online activity. But before I get started, before I get started, I want to share a video that does not represent my views, but it kind of goes in, in line with what tattoo is permanent. That is correct. Rob was talking last night about millennials and what their future is like. But I want to give you a video relative to millennials, if you don't mind. This is kind of interesting. I was at church one day, and the speaker that day was, um, was different. I just sat there with tears in my eyes, learning about this ministry that was revolutionizing the planet. I'm talking, of course, about Millennial International. The need is enormous. There are over 10 million millennials out there who have graduated with no work ethic, no job, no discernible skills at all, and they have expenses. Housing. Student loans. Credit card debt. And I didn't really realize the magnitude of the problem until I looked into the eyes of a millennial, and I saw that face with the, the dead, <laughs> nothing's happening up here kind of thing. So I went out to the booth after the service the and I talked with the guy, only. and he really informed me about the devastation that's not being able to fund a millennial lifestyle. Core power yoga. Birch box for men. I looked over all the envelopes and my heart was really touched when I saw this one particular fellow that I, I just had to get more information Declan. about him. He was uh, Declan from Beverly Hills. I am an uh, aspiring photographer. I graduated college with an art degree, so obviously that puts me at a disadvantage. Volkswagen Jetta lease. Beard wax. Spotify premium. In his last letter, he wrote to me and said that his uh, weekend was, oh, how did he put it? Um, totes lit fam. Literally have no idea what that means. Spend cycle membership. Pet food for my rescue dog. Uber's home from a pub crawl. A typical sponsorship program costs $29 a month. Millennial International is actually $2,900 a month. Yeah, it seems expensive at first, but when you see the need, it is so worth it. Trunk Club subscription. Essential oils. Annual pilgrimage to Bethel Church. It's the same as a traditional sponsorship program, uh, except instead of getting, say, a soccer ball for his birthday, he's getting an Audi. Am I capable of having a job? Sure, but I just feel like Maybe employment right now would just kind of be stifling my creativity. Through the sponsorship program, they actually set up a chance for us to meet each other in person. I brought him an apple pie that my wife had baked for him, but I totally forgot he's gluten-free, so we couldn't eat it. I mean, obviously I've seen Food Inc., so I don't eat the traditional meals like everybody else. For breakfast, I usually do like some kombucha juice. 
He really didn't have much energy that week, and it turns out you know, he was on a juice cleanse. And I wanted to respect that. My wish for Declan, oh gosh, uh, that he would realize his potential in life, that he would awesome. be better, achieve more. I've been getting blue ribbons and participation trophies my whole life. What do you expect? For me, if it wasn't for the program, I'd have to get a job. Or worse, start a GoFundMe. Many of these kids in traditional sponsorship programs are fighting diseases like malaria, pneumonia, tuberculosis. And these That's millennials have the same struggle. Peanut allergies, pollen sensitivity, lactose intolerance. Kids in Africa are getting typhoid. Declan was recently diagnosed with tennis elbow. I was originally paying vision and eye care insurance for him, but it turns out his eyeglasses weren't even real. To me, you can't put a price on friendship. Join me in sponsoring a millennial today and help us. <laughs> help us. Help us. Help us live the lives we portray on Instagram. So, I did, a, I did a lesson on the different generations and how they are a byproduct of their socialization. And th this was, it was completely satirical. And there were elements which I found humorous. I would not position millennials in that, the way that this was represented. It was comedic, but it, it, was, it was not, I just did this as entertainment value that there is a whole new line of thinking that is out there right now. So one of the things that is consistent with a particular generation, and I'll put it into the baby boomers as well, that they do not believe that the internet is permanent. They don't believe this, that they think that they can press the delete button and everything goes away, which is so not the truth. They also do not think that evil exists. So I'm going to share with you some real-time examples that I have mentioned before. I've mentioned these before, but I'm going to let you see firsthand how this is handled. So we're going to start with the first one that I've talked about. And that is the young woman who is a doctor in residency. Wow, look at you, Tony, post posted in there. Awesome. That um, she would had graduated from her doctoral education in medicine was serving a residency at a hospital and this is the behavior which was caught by her friend remember i said there are a lot of people that will not intervene but they'll shoot the video they will not go in to rescue people from making stupid decisions but they will they have no problems audio recording it and live streaming it so let me share this first one with you this is very sad. Doctor at the center of that violent confrontation with an Uber driver, Anjali Ramkisun is here to talk about what happened for the first time since that video went viral, viewed more than five million times. And we're going to get to that exclusive interview after this from ABC's Gio Benitez. It's the video that spread like wildfire. Angeli Ramkasoon is a fourth-year neurology resident at one of Miami's most prestigious hospitals. But last week, she was belligerent. I'm a five-foot girl that weighs 180 no. pounds. I'm getting really, like, belligerent right now. Caught on camera in a bizarre confrontation with an Uber driver. It happened in the heart of downtown Miami. Can you call 911, please? Rab Kassoon thinks this is her driver. It isn't. He's waiting to pick up someone else. But still, she demands he drive her. After things get physical and she's pushed to the ground, she gets into the car and does this. Many of you chiming in right away online. Violetta writing, this person should not be practicing medicine. Another saying, I wouldn't go anywhere near the facility for medical care if she continues to work there. And another saying, she should be arrested and charged with assault. But the driver, speaking to local station WTVJ, is not pressing charges. She was erratic. She was like screaming, cursing, you know, calling me names. Ram Kassoon, now on administrative leave from the hospital while it conducts an internal investigation, and Uber has suspended her. For Good Morning America, Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And Dr. Anjali Ramkasun joins us now. Welcome to GMA. Thanks for coming on this morning. You know, that video is so hard for all of us to watch. I can't imagine 
what it's like for you. When you look at it, what do you see? I see a person that is not me. That's, I, I'm ashamed. I still can't watch the entire video. Um, that is Every you, time though. someone brings it up or tries to ask me what was happening at this point, I just, I can't. So what was happening? I was really, a lot had happened that day, actually. But what are we going to believe, your um, words now the, or the, the video evidence of who you are? Point, my father had been placed in the hospital, and just minutes prior to that altercation with the Uber driver, oh, no, we're gonna um, rationalize my boyfriend your behavior? and I, two years, had just broken up. So he went home. Um, I was there by myself. So you guys have been drinking? Yes. And I knew that I'd had a few drinks, so I decided, and actually I'd driven to that place that night. Um, but I did not want to drive my car home, so I left no, my car my there, and that was why right. I was trying to get the, the Uber to get home. Everything you said sounds I, pretty I bad. I honestly, yeah. but you know, it's I, I, I can't even listen to this woman. This is such self-glorified rationalization that is almost blaming a woman for getting raped based upon what she's wearing. This is ridiculous. It is. It's absolutely insane. What she's trying to do is make this go away by saying, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, when were you lying? Are you lying right now on the TV show or were you lying right then? I'm going to look at what you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, But let me, let me take you down the path of another one. So this woman, this woman has a character now that she is unemployable. That video is permanent. It's undeleted. It has 8.5 million views up on YouTube just on one channel. So this decision that she chose to act out, somebody else video recorded, now makes her unemployable. This is a 20-something-year-old. Let's, let's go a little bit further down the pipe. Maybe During Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, there was one gentleman who went to the restaurant, not to support the restaurant, but to actually give one of the employees a piece of his mind. That gentleman is Adam Smith. He's actually a CFO of Vanti Inc., uh, which is a medical device manufacturer. And in this video, he starts off by going through the drive-thru, ordering water because he knows it's free, and then listen to how he treats the employee. Hey, how you doing? Fine. Good. He's self -recording. Is this my free water? It is? Awesome. You know why I'm getting the free water, right? I do not. Because Chick-fil-A is a hateful corporation. I disagree. I wouldn't I, I know, but treat any of our customers differently. I, wouldn't say I yes. know, but you guys but the corporation gives money to hate hate groups. Hate groups. Just I, because people want to kiss another guy. On this Sorry? I'm, I have to say neutral on this subject. My personal beliefs no, should I be in the workplace. Yeah, I believe that too. I don't believe yeah. corporations should be giving money to hateful I'm really groups. That you're Totally understand. I'll take my water. Okay. It's it, my pleasure to serve you always. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm glad that I can take a little bit of money from Chick-fil-A and maybe less money to hate groups. Well, Have a great day. We're always happy to serve everyone. Every I don't know how you live with yourself you and, and work here. I don't understand it. This is a horrible corporation with horrible values. We're here to you serve deserve you better. You, you deserve better. Rachel, you deserve better. Okay. Well, I hope you have a really nice day. I will. I just did something really good. I feel purposeful. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Okay. I'm a nice guy, by the way. And I'm you totally are. heterosexual. I'm not not a gay in me. I just can't stand the hate, you know? it got to stop. It's got to stop, guys. Well, stand up. Have a nice day. All right. See you guys. Now that... So, this is... This man was waving the ba banner of tolerance, right? Want to be tolerance inclusive of his view but he was being intolerant of a contrary view and he decided that i would take a camera and video record my protest his protest publicly on the internet she handled it beautifully well this man all of his shareholders said you're a brand ambassador dude you're a brand ambassador of this company. You're a CEO. You should have more common sense than to go out on some political bent publicly. You are now no longer CEO of your own company. Unemployable. The man is on food stamps. You have the right, the freedom of speech, but you just may not be immune to the consequences of, of how you exercise that speech. The court of public opinion will make a decision if you have the character to sit inside of somebody else's office. Right now, the public has found that those two people do not have the character that they would want to risk their brand.
Let's continue. This is quite enlightening, would you not think? Hi, I'd like my latte with a side of screaming in my face. <laughs> this employee at Starbucks is not working there anymore because she lost it, oh. yelling at a customer. Bye. 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 She got the anger. Uh, she she the says anger. it was about a straw and that she left the job well, voluntarily. Um, you know, this lady's asking for the manager because they're obviously getting a little sideways with each other about what's going on. Well, I mean, first of all, are you not allowed to steal straws? Because I do that all the I time. I thought straws were free. I thought they were free. I thought that was like a complimentary part. So that's going to change my life, basically. I watched a dust up like this at the post office one day. I stood back aghast. It's amazing to me how people, like, can lose their... Well, what do you Eric, attribute it to? to do you, you attribute to, like, pent up? <laughs> so much. I'm going to pause this one. So, yeah, right. It doesn't matter to me how it starts. What I see is, did you see that that was a, pa a passerby video recording that engagement? That was somebody that was just observing it, not intervening, and recording. And now that went viral. That young lady behind the counter at Starbucks no longer has a job. Let me keep going. This one cracked me up. You beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. I'm just, I'm just gonna jump into this. Spoiler alert, Philip DeFranco just jumped into it. Also, accidentally talked about himself in the third person. Whatever, first thing we're gonna talk about today is a woman by the name of Annalise Nielsen. Annalise is reportedly the founder of a digital feminist group by the name of Girls Night In. She's also listed as the CEO of an alt porn website. Based on the full raw video that has now been released, seems to be the queen of the social justice warrior cry bully elite. The way the story goes is Annalise Annalise uses the car service lift. She gets into the vehicle and uh-oh, she notices her lift driver has one of those hula dancer bobblehead things on his dashboard. And it's at that moment she seemingly decides that she's going to film herself shaming him. You thought that was adorable. You didn't think about like the pillaging of the like, continent of Hawaii. All right, first thing up, if you're gonna start shouting cultural appropriation, you should understand that Hawaii is not a continent. If you miss that day in geography, you have Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Antarctica, and Australia. Oddly enough, no continent of Hawaii. So you won't get rid of the doll then? Because that was like really cute thing that you found at Goodwill. All right, great way to have a healthy debate, allude to the fact that your Lyft driver doesn't make that much money. Oh, man, You're worse than give you a one star. You're gonna be on Gawker. <laughs> Oh, that's one of the things I hate the most in this world. When someone that has any clout whatsoever, a lot of the times I see it with YouTubers or bloggers or just like mid-tier whatever talent. You see it a lot at like South by Southwest or any of these conventions. When someone doesn't just do what they say and they're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet about this. You're done. Then she starts arguing with one of the passengers who's just not on her side. The fact that you care that much about something that is on his dashboard? Yes, I do actually care a lot. That's sad. Doing it and, and you're not being pleasant oh, because I wasn't nice enough to you? I wasn't nice enough to you for this thing. That's fine. I've been video recording the entire time. I'm excited. You have been actually very rude and extremely entitled. Yeah, I'm sorry that you have no consideration for actual Hawaiian people who don't want to be a bobblehead item in your car while you're driving for a lift. You fucking selfish, dumbass idiot. <laughs> and the Lyft driver then ends up ending her ride. He gets her to leave the vehicle. He gets out of there. And the thing is, some of the sources for this story say that the Lyft driver was actually fired. Which, if that's true, that's insane. But I also think that they're taking that information from her Twitter. Which seems to have been taken over by someone else who has also now posted a GIF of her face on a bobblehead. This woman is the prime example why when people say, why don't you call yourself a feminist if you're all for equality? This woman, this person who just berated a guy because he had a little thing. He has his little bobblehead on the dash and she goes into this ridiculous rant that honestly sounds like someone mocking what a social justice warrior sounds like. All you cis, white, heteronormative males exploiting resources and cultural appropriation towards, uh... One second, when am I being professionally offended by? Oh yeah, Hawaii. And it just appears to me that she's being so professionally offended when she says something like, you are so rude and entitled, she doesn't realize she's projecting. But something to be said, Annalise did want this video to go viral and now it has. 
possibly not in the way that she originally wanted. Also, rest in peace, Gawker. And my final takeaway is that guy, to me, is a saint. If I was in his position, I would have destroyed her life and everything that she thought that she was with words in a way that I can't even say on this show because I would lose. So, that young lady is now no longer employed. This is a person that felt it was their place to video record, and she now owns the word that she used. She created a digital tattoo of this video, which has got now over 10 million views on this particular issue. Sadly, Gawker has been out of business because of what their CEO did. The internet is public, and it is permanent. But let me not just give you this framework from the video because the video piece the video is that video evidence that you are physically there representing yourself in this image somebody else could record it you record it your friend could record it but let's take another le step down wow so you are out of here see ya so let's take this down into the domain of tweets Let's take a look at some tweets. Hey guys, welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Berg, and today we have the top 10 tweets that lost people their jobs. Now I'm sure we've all said things online that we regret at one point or another. Am I right? I know I have, but the worst thing that usually happens to us is a little bit of embarrassment and a reminder to not do that kind of thing again. However, for the people on this list, they ended up losing their jobs in less than 140 characters. How is that even possible, you might ask? Well, we're gonna find out right now and get into it with our number 10. In 2011, world famous car manufacturer Chrysler tweeted out, I find it ironic that Detroit is known as the Motor City and yet no one here knows how to f***ing drive. Now if you thought that sounded a little bit out of character for a major car company to say, yeah, you're right, it wasn't actually them saying that. The tweet was sent out by Scott Bartosiewicz who was a Chrysler employee in charge of their social media. He tweeted it when he was stuck in traffic on the highway thinking he was actually on his own personal account. As you can see, he was wrong. I just hope he didn't send any personal messages when logged into his Chrysler account. That might have freaked people out. Moving on to number nine now. A lot of you guys might recognize this guy, Timothy De La Ghetto. He's a big YouTuber these days, but back in 2009, Tim was working at a branch of the California Pizza Kitchen when they issued their new uniform, including a black button-up shirt. He tweeted at the company saying, black button-ups are the lamest shit ever. Now, it wasn't hard for the company to track him down because, you know, he tweeted at them and they quickly fired him for it. But Timothy actually turned it all around by making a YouTube video called Twitter Got Me Fired, which helped propel him to YouTube stardom. So, guess it worked out for him doing that tweet. Next up at number eight now, in 2009, actress Jane Addams of HBO series Hung had soup and lemonade at a cafe in Beverly Hills. She was given her bill of $13.44 and told them she had actually left her wallet in her car and that she'd go and get it. She never returned to pay her bill. An angry waiter, John Barrett Ingalls, tweeted out saying, Jane Addams, star of HBO series Hung, skipped out on a $13.44 check. Her agent called and paid the following day. No tip. So yeah, her agent did return a month later to pay the $13.44, but didn't find John working there anymore. Someone at head office had seen his angry tweet and decided to fire him after he'd been working there for about five years. Eesh. Was that fair, guys? Coming in at number seven now, Toronto anchorman Damien Goddard was fired from his job on Sportsnet after tweeting in support of a hockey agent called Todd Reynolds who tweeted out criticism of a hockey player supporting gay marriage. You guys follow me? Good. Anyway, Damien tweeted out saying, I completely and wholeheartedly support Todd Reynolds and his support for the traditional and true meaning of marriage. Now, this drew a lot of anger from supporters of gay marriage and Sportsnet soon released a statement saying they had let him go because he was not the right fit for their organization. This ended up sparking an even bigger debate online about whether or So I, there, there's something that you may notice that is consistent here, that, that certain types of speech are kind of approved, and there's other kinds of speech that are not approved, and that really depends upon where you work or the view of who you're employed by. But the freedom of speech, you're not free from the consequences of who may interpret or perceive or be against that, type, that kind of speech. 
So those were just an example of 140 characters on Twitter that have lost people their jobs. So let's take it one more step. Let's take it into the domain of that photo that is Wow, that, that is just filled with vitriol, so I don't need to respond to that at all. That was horrible. So let's take it into the domain of the photos. Those that, that are popping up on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Let's look at what happens with photos. The first one's pretty humorous. Hello, you most beautiful and most amazing top tennis of glory. How are you feeling today? Fantastically, I hope. Today we're talking the top 10 pictures that lost people their jobs. Uh oh. So posting a cheeky selfie or funny snap on social media can seem like an excellent idea. That is, until your boss sees it and somehow doesn't see the funny side. So here are 10 people that lost their jobs for that very reason. In at number 10, we have a cheerleader prankster. Have you guys ever done that thing where your friend falls asleep at a party or a sleepover and you draw things on their face? What a hilarious prank, am I right? Especially when you draw a marker pen penis on their face and it's just there for days. Funny? No, not so much in this case. That kind of behavior, if posted on social media, could lose you your job. This is exactly what happened to an 18-year-old cheerleader for the Patriots in 2008. Caitlin Davis was attending Johnson & Wales University at the time this picture was taken, and it was taken after a Halloween night out. You know what that's like, things get a bit crazy. Caitlin said, me and my girls left the dorm and went to another house and came back to a kid passed out on the futon we were supposed to be sleeping on. The guys ended up drawing on him due to the fact that he was the first one to pass out on Halloween night. What she didn't realize that amongst the sea of male genitalia on this guy's face, someone had also drawn a swastika. She said, I didn't realize what had been drawn on him, which I take responsibility for not being alert. Yeah, people weren't very happy when they saw her posing next to a swastika, which I think we can all understand. In at number nine, we have an Ohio bus driver. So what kind of idiot takes pictures of themselves drinking behind the wheel, then posts it on social media? I mean, it's pretty much against the law and could lead the police right up to your door. On top of that, you'd have to be a downright fool to do it if your job is to be a driver. A driver that transports children to and from school. In 2015, one lady from the Cincinnati area of Ohio was given the boot from First Student Bus Company after a school was made aware of a beer guzzling selfie. In her defense, it is reported that she was at the end of her route and there were no children on board, but that was not enough to save her her job. In at number eight, we have a pipe smoker. So if you're going to do something illegal, then maybe once again, don't post it on Facebook. In 2010, a guy who certainly liked a little blaze here and there posted a picture on Facebook of his activities. Now, I think he's smoking pot from a pipe, but it could be something else. Either way, best not to picture yourself taking drugs and put it on Facebook, especially if your boss is your Facebook friend. So a user posted this picture, or to which his boss, dabbing. Andy, I mean, said, give me a good reason not to fire you on Monday morning. E? In at number seven, <laughs> we have a teacher on vacation. So Ashley Payne, a young teacher from Georgia in the United States, went on vacation to Europe during the school holidays. During her time away, she posted some snaps from her trip on her Facebook page, which had high privacy settings. One of her pictures posted was of her holding a couple of alcoholic drinks and smiling. And I have to say, to me, this looks pretty tame. She's just having fun. Nonetheless, a person claiming to be a concerned parent emailed the school with the picture. On her return back to Alpachi High School, she was given an ultimatum, resign or be fired. Ashley even took the issue to court and lost. Honestly, I think this is absolutely horrible and shocking. She wasn't doing anything illegal. She was just having fun on vacation, but this picture lost her a job. In at number six, we have a naughty mascot. So 40 year old mother of three, Tracy Chandler, was a team mascot for British football team, the Doncaster Rovers. In 2011, Tracy wore the Donny Dog team mascot costume and was fired after she posted a snap of herself in lingerie next to the dog's head. Now the image was reportedly part of a shoot for children's charity, NSPCC. However, when the football club saw it, they let her go from the team. Now Tracy was very, very upset having been at the Thank club for almost four years. 
years. In an interview with BBC Radio 5 Live, Tracy said, I am absolutely devastated. I've not stopped crying all morning. She said that they had sent her an email saying they didn't need her services anymore and that she had disgraced the club. It was noted later that she was fired for this image whilst the guys in the team had posed semi nude for the same charity for a calendar a few years earlier. People were crying sexism and she was offered her job back. Go Tracy! In at number 5 we have a Taco Bell employee. Oh honey no. The second I saw this picture of an unidentified Taco Bell employee licking a stack of tacos, I knew that he was asking for trouble. This employee and the photographer worked at the Ridgecrest branch in Kern County, California. After the image was posted on Facebook, it made its way to the powers that be in head office. Obviously the pair that were involved were fired. However afterwards, Taco Bell did release a statement saying that the image was a prank and they were using a stack of training tacos that are about to be thrown out. Part of the statement read, We do not believe that these employees harmed or intended oh yeah, to harm anyone, but we deplore the impression that this has caused our customers, fans, franchisees like and team members. The behaviour is unacceptable for people working in a restaurant. They said that the employees involved were suspended without pay and eventually were terminated. Clearly in KFC, a lady didn't get the memo that licking food was wrong. In at number 4 we have the Kentucky Fried Potato Liquor. In 2013, a high school student with a part time job at KFC in Johnson City, Tennessee was fired after a picture of her licking a tub of potato. I'm going to jump in here. I could keep going with these. There, there's, there's so much evidence that is easily found. It's on my Twitter timeline of the internet when you do something in video, in audio, in photo, in text. The delete button doesn't go away. And you are free to say whatever you darn well please. That is the freedom we enjoy in the United States. But on the other side of that digital connection are other people. And they get to, de to decide what you are showing us and what you are saying and what kind of person you are. So if you are going to be photographing yourself licking a stack of tacos or taking photos of taking pizza elements and putting them in your body and then putting them on top of a pizza, if you're going to give us the ability to see that in a permanent way, we get the ability to make a decision that you are a person that while the company may not want you around, I don't want you around. I don't want you around my business. So I created a short video that I'm putting up on YouTube that says, it's six clicks. College admissions and employers can find out your character in six clicks. So whatever you post, whatever you say, whatever you record that you put on the public internet, you are allowing the employer to determine if they want you, if they want your children. Your children outside of your participation in your oversight are creating a digital tattoo. If you've never seen Musical.ly or Dub Smash or going to Live.me and see what the children are doing on Snapchat and other platforms, if you continue to say that there is no evil when that child is ready to go to school or when that child is ready to get a job and the employers have the ability within six mouse clicks to look at the character, Do we want to hold our children to that standard or do we want to be helping them identify the wisdom in advance so that they don't permanently affect their future like that doctor? I am feeling adequate, Trinity. Thank you. <clears throat> I talk about awareness. I talk about oversight. And I talk about control. The school, this is not their responsibility. We have 15, 16, 12, 15, 12 to 16 years to speak wisdom into our children's life. And that the fact that we say it's not happening, I shared with you the other day what is happening in the domain of video games and how those videos are out there. I don't do this in judgment. I do this in love to draw attention to the fact that our children are at risk. It just so happened I, I can believe it. And I, I'll tell you right now, my daughter has an account on a social media platform that is photos and videos. 
I have the ability to see all of the photos. My wife also has that ability. But just the other day, she went live on a video. Now, she knows my rules about the video, but she was testing. And when she went live on video, I was notified. I went into that video and I observed what was happening. She didn't see me come in, but I was observing what was happening. Fortunately, it was, it was not bad. But when she came home and in private, I had a conversation with her and I said, sweetie, I understand this can be very fun, but let me show you some things that some other kids have done with the video online. And I don't want you to do that. I'm not opposed to you having a video presence online, but I wanted to do it with my approval and oversight. Watch the movie, go, go to the YouTube channel and look for we're gonna lose. There's, there's so much personal identifiable information that's going through the video games as well. And the behavior that is happening online, I don't think that, I don't know your son, but his behavior online, I would venture to say, is not who he really is in real life. And I would ask that question, if an employer were to meet you in a video game, would they want to work, want you to work with them? Very simple question. You're 25 years old, you're playing Call of Duty, you're playing Counter-Strike, whatever you're playing, Grand Theft Auto, who knows? And if your employer were to join you in that game, the, 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 I don't know. I don't know if people are good or not, but if you're associating, if you're in that game and that circle of people that's in that game, it's, it's rubber and glue, what bounces off of me, sticks to you. Well, it's sticking to him too. It's sticking to him. What's the name of the scope about which video games my son play? Minecraft. Minecraft is a very good game until you get connected online with the other people playing Minecraft. I'll share a video of somebody where there was a young, young boy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So if your son is sleeping with the iPad, you have no idea what he's doing while he's, while he's sleeping with the iPad. Yeah. There's a thing called Skype sleepovers and Uvu sleepovers. Um, you, you have to do your own Google search. What you're willing to see on YouTube, there's, there's plenty of nasty stuff that's happening online. I'm just giving you an example of We're Gonna Lose, who is a well-known uh, person on um, video games but uh, I can share with you a video where there was a young boy who is on Minecraft and then he goes over to in, in through the Minecraft world and he bullies other people in Minecraft to the point he was reported so much that admin came into the mine Minecraft game there was an admin came in as a character and went after to talk to this boy and what happened it's in a different language but what you hear what you hear in that it's unbelievable so you have no understanding of the psychological issues that people may have that they find escape on video that's why i say live streaming should never be therapy there should never be a therapeutic discussion on live stream watching pokemon all the time so Pokemon, what do you have, if you are doing Pokemon, I don't know if you're doing Pokemon on your phone, but you, you have gone to the, the dark side of not being concerned about privacy. You are giving people so much information about yourself, your travels, where you go, when you're there. You're giving them video camera the information about the inside of your home. Pokemon Go is one of the most invasive applications and people willingly give personally identifiable information to Pokemon. All for the sake of being distracted and entertained on a, on a chase for Pokemon. Very, very dangerous. It's, it's, it's... People have no ability to hit a pause button and think 
Why is this being built? And what am I benefiting from getting this? Nobody thinks. They just react. Whatever I can do to be distracted. My wife, I was sitting down with my wife watching the football games. And she said to me, honey, do you believe that there are fights breaking out at Dallas right now? And I said, sweetie, we are in a place right now where the coliseums are filled with people that want to be distracted and anesthetized from the real plights that are happening in the world. When you build coliseums and fill them with thousands and thousands of people as they did in Rome, they're distractions from what everyday needs should be. So am I surprised that fights broke out in the stadiums after a Dallas event, the Dallas football game? Absolutely not. Because these people are just feeling free to emote themselves in a group without looking at any personal accountability or responsibility that I just need to be distracted right now. And we're living in a society that is filled with distraction, that we don't want to think. Tell us what to do. That's what school has indoctrinated us to. Tell us what to do and we will do it. Rope memorization, repetition, tell me what to do. Where I say creative thinking and discernment are gone, it's because people want to be told what to do. That that example of the millennial that was being shared that I got an art degree, but it might not be very good for my career, but I don't necessarily want to take a job because that will stifle my creativity. I get that. I understand that sentiment. But unfortunately, you have to have revenue to put, you have to have a job of some type to pay your bills. Oh my gosh. Quantum Electron, I, that's one of the reasons it's very difficult for me to be anywhere is because people telling me what to do is come, my head is such a way that I look at other, at other ways to do things. I'm not opposed to being obedient to do what I'm being told. But at the same time, I'm going to put a similar amount of energy onto another way to do it better, faster, cheaper, more efficient. That's me. It's freezing. But that's just me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this, this nonsensical Ryan Sways promotion that's happening through Periscope and other social media is just a bore. It's just a bore. So... Um, yeah, I know he's gone. Yes. If you go to, um, if you go to, first of all, swipe, follow me on, on Periscope. And if you look at my profile, there's a free PDF to download. Yeah, I know it's it just block them. They're, they're just nuisance. Uh, if you download the free PDF, it gives you all of my social media sites. So I have information up on Pinterest. I have stuff on Facebook and I have a YouTube channel. YouTube channel, there's several different playlists inside of there. So if you jump to YouTube, you will see the not my child that I constantly talk about. You will see people that have actually lost their jobs because of what I have found on Periscope. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of content on there. There's information about video games in there as well. All of my information drives back to parentdome.com, which is an educational site. It's a, it's a university of lessons, teaching, videos, tutorials, research, white papers on how to help the termite guy. Yes, he's gone. The termite guy is, he's out in Las Vegas making money through um, selling sex on Chatterbait. That, that's a very rewarding career is uh, prostituting yourself on, on live stream. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. So, and this is what he feels that his talents afford him, that he feels that he is an Adonis kind of person and that he can make more money prostituting his body than he could using his brain or his back. Um, there are all kinds of people out there. That is just something that I would not choose to do. And it was something would be something that I would say to my daughter that you are much better than the sum total of your reproductive parts. I'm going to say your value, sweetie, my daughter, is so much greater than the physical appeal of your reproductive parts. Because I know your value is much, much higher than that. Now, I'm not going to say I wouldn't be 
if, if she made contrary decisions to my view, I'd still love her. I'd still love her. I would be praying for her to make another choice. But I, I value her much greater than her reproductive body parts. So those are the type of things that my school system will not teach my daughter. Society will not teach my daughter. But that is my job to instill those morals and ethics inside of her. Um, that, that is a subjective thing, quantum electron. Because real men is a function of the society. Because when I talk about moral relativism, who, who defines what is a real man? Does Islamic society determine what a real man's attributes are? You wouldn't see her like Trump, uh, Trump sees Ivanka. I, I don't know how Trump sees Ivanka. I think Trump has a very high level of respect for Ivanka. But I, I don't have a personal glimpse into that. I look at the attributes of his children, and they're pretty, they're pretty powerful attributes of his kids. So from a father's standpoint, I think he did a pretty good job because I look at the character of those kids, and it's pretty, pretty remarkable. I look at, uh, wow, I, I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Never, never heard that. So when we make those kind of statements about being a real man, what is the platform that we stand on to describe the attributes of a real man? And I say, I have it. Perspective says Noah was righteous for his time. Abraham was righteous for his time. No, but today's standards, it's moral relativism has invaded that thinking that we can say something that is evil is good. Society, when society calls bad good, you want to be on the side that your standard is much higher than the society's standard. My standard is way beyond what's acceptable to the society, but that's okay. I'm in this world. I'm not of it. So what depraved things that society may do, that's up to the laws of the, the society to determine that. As long as mine, mine do not transgress those and are higher, I'm golden. Because what I do in, the, in my bedroom is none of your business. But my standard is I'm monogamous. I have a single covetous, a covenant-based relationship with my partner, my wife, that is my standard. And what happens inside of there, I don't break any of the laws. The laws are much looser relative to what I hold dear inside the relationship of my wife and my child. So, and I can stand that test no matter where I go in the world. No matter where I go in the world because my standard is higher than the ones that have been set forth by the laws of the land. So this is just kind of a, a mental prick that I'm trying to point out that what is happening online is public. It's permanent. What we say, what we do is recorded and that you may not see an issue with it today. Right now... A couple of hours ago, there was a young lady on Periscope. She's, she had acknowledged that she's in college. She was wearing a robe but exposing part of herself while smoking a rather large water pipe. And she was engaging her audience. And someone asked her what she wanted to do when she graduated college. And she says, I'm going to school for criminal justice and I want to be a police officer and get into possibly the FBI. I'm watching her smoking a water pipe on a live recording. Her field of study is criminal justice. She's showing that she's breaking a federal law, maybe not a state law, but a federal one. And she wants to have a job in a federal agency. So when she goes and applies for that job, in the future and that video shows up they're going to say what were you really smoking that day because we have evidence of you smoking which is a it's a controlled one substance accord according to the federal law we don't want anything to do with you 
You didn't have the common sense to prepare yourself on this journey to be a FBI official because you broke the law right here. Adios. So her six-year plan, eight-year plan, has been disqualified by that one impulsive act. But where are the parents speaking to these children? They don't have wisdom. Mom, dad, it's our job to speak wisdom into these children. I saw a funny meme, not funny, relative to the protests that are happening around Donald Trump. And it showed these two little kids standing in front of a, a riot barricade. And it said, F Donald Trump. We don't have a kid problem. We have a parent problem. What parent would put in the hands of a child that's 8, 9, or 10 a sign that would say that and be plastered all over the internet? We have a parent problem. Resist the impulse. You can be part of the lemmings and you will all go over a cliff. You will all go over a cliff. So I'm going to periscope down. Thank you all for joining. Used to be, I would think there was nothing to stop me. That's, that's very true. Many people thought that there was nothing to stop them. But the internet is permanent and it will stop you. They can't speak. Well, here's the thing. Parents do have the wisdom. They just do not apply it because the application of wisdom is uncomfortable. Holding our children accountable is uncomfortable. They have it. They're choosing not to exercise it. That's a choice. You, it's easier to make excuses for something that you're not willing to address. You